I just want to thank um, my parents to the Lord, um, Pastor Tolu and Pastor Fumi for the opportunity to be able to bring God's word again this morning. If we're going to give it up to them, let's go ahead and give it up to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The title of the message this morning is Overcoming at the Gates. Overcoming at the Gates. Um, I just got this title this morning. I'd written the message a while ago, but it couldn't have any title. I struggle to put title to messages. I have no idea how the pastors do it Sunday in, Sunday out, preaching messages and with appropriate titles. So I want to bless God for the grace upon the life of Pastor Tolu and Pastor Fumi, for the grace and the calling upon them to bring us messages, timely messages, Sunday in and Sunday out. I want to appreciate the, the grace of God upon your life, and I pray that the Lord will continue to multiply that grace, that anointing and the call in the mighty name of Jesus. To make my work easier this morning, Sister Jumai started to lay the foundation of this message last week as she led us powerfully in that prayer last week from Psalm 24, verse 9 to 10. The Spirit of the Lord is one. The main text this morning is Acts chapter 12, from verse 5 to 11. Acts chapter 12, from verse 5 to 11. Acts chapter 12, from verse 5 to 11. And I'll go ahead and just continue to read. The Bible says, Peter therefore was kept in the prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains, because two soldiers and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Verse 7, Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Guard yourself and tie your sandals. So he did. And he said, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him, and did not know what had been done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. Verse 10, And when they were past the first and second guard post, they, were, they came to an iron gate that led into the city, which opened of them of its own accord. And they went out and down one street. And immediately the angel departed. And Peter had come to himself and said, I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hands of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. He said, I know for certain, verse 11, that the Lord has sent his angel and delivered me from the hands of Herod and from the expectation of the Jewish people. I pray for somebody today that the Lord will deliver you from the hands of Herod. Whatever Herod represents and from the expectation, evil expectation of men in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to turn to your neighbor on the right of and say, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will deliver you from the hands of Herod and from the evil expectation of men in the mighty name of Jesus. Herod was on a rampage to harass the early church. He had just killed James, the brother of John, and he was about to kill Peter as well. The passage tells us that that night before Peter was executed, God sent an angel to rescue and deliver him from the hands of Herod and from the expectation of the Jewish. What was the expectation? They wanted him dead. A couple of things caught my attention in this story that we read. So I want that scripture back, please, if you don't mind. The Bible says in verse 10, it said, And when they had passed the first and the second word, they came to an iron gate that led into the city, which opened of its own accord. The Bible said they went past two guards, and they came to an iron gate. And that gate led into the city. We saw from the scripture that Sister Jemai led us in prayer with last week. From Psalm 24 verse 9 to 10. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. That the king of glory might come in. From that passage we see that 
these gates have gatekeepers. In that passage that Pastor Sister Jemai helped us with, the heads were the gatekeepers. But for Peter, it was two guard posts that were the keepers of an iron gate that led into the city. There was no way Peter was going to escape that. If by any chance they had woken up when the angel was leading him out, I'm sure they would have probably just executed him right there and then. But by the grace of God, he was able to pass, bypass the two gatekeepers and was able to go through the iron gate. Gates are access points. They are opportunities that present to us as we go through life. Gates of freedom, gates that lead to peace, gates that lead to new territories, gates that lead to the next level, gates that lead to the next level of grace that God wants to take you and I to. But like Peter, they are gatekeepers that guard these gates. But thank God because God had a plan and a purpose for the life of Peter. He could not be held bound. The Bible told him, he said, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. So there were souls that needed to be won. So there was no way he could be restrained in the prison. Another thing I noted about this scripture is that the gate that opened to Peter led into the city. It was the gate that led into the city. What happens in the city? There's buying and selling. It's the most boisterous part of any community that you go to. You have headquarters of corporations in the city. We have tourist attraction in the city. Many things go on in the city. And this gate that led into the city was the gate that was holding Peter, was a gate that was was, was, what, what was the only thing. The gatekeepers were the only thing that were hindering him from going through those gates. Another thing I noted from this scripture is that if that gate led into the city, then there are different other kind of gates as well. So that there are gates and there are gates. Not every gate will lead into the city. So that we need to be careful what kind of gate we are praying to open unto us. The Bible said, Jesus said to Peter, Thou art Peter, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So there's a gate that leads to hell. And the Bible says that gate has a tendency to prevail. But Jesus promised Peter that I was not going to be pre prevail. But for any reason you are knocking on the gate of hell, the gate of sin and immorality, <laughs> that gate might come back to bite. <laughs> And when it opens, it's going to take a lot of binding and casting to get those to go back into where they have come from. When there are more important gates that lead into the city that you should be binding and casting. I pray in the name of Jesus that we will not open the wrong gates in the name of Jesus. We will not be knocking on gates that would open to the gates of hell. Our children will not knock on the wrong gates. The gates that would lead to destruction, they will not knock on it in the mighty name of Jesus. And here was Peter, the only thing that was standing between him and the city were two gatekeepers and the gate that led to the city. So how did he get delivered? The Bible says, and the gate that led into the city opened of its own accord. I'm like, how? The gates don't have a mind of their own. How did they open of its own accord? Gates don't open of their own accord. Even the ones that have been programmed open according to how it has been programmed. So that these gates only answer to authorities behind them. In the case of Peter, they were the gatekeepers. So how then did Peter get out? In verse 11 of that Acts chapter 12, verse 11, he said, and Peter came to himself and he said, I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angels to bypass the gatekeepers and deliver me from the hands of Herod. So it is the Lord. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory, the Lord, 
might be able to access. Brethren, I want to tell you this morning that whatever answers to the king of glory can answer to you and I. Because when the king of glory got to that gate, he said, who is the king of glory? He said, the Lord God. The Bible tells me in John chapter 1 verse 12, it said, for as many as have received him, he has given them the power, the dominion, the access to become the sons of God. For as many as received him, is that he gave them the power, the access, the ability to also represent the king of glory at the gates. He said he has given them that power. And as many as believe on his name. The question is, have you received him? And do you believe on his name? Because for as many as I believe him, and many have received him, he gave them that power. That power that the king of glory has, that when he gets to the gate, and they say, who is this king of glory? You say, it is me, the daughter of the king of glory. You have no choice but to open up unto me. John chapter 4, James, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. He said, and you are God, of God, little children. James chapter 4, verse 4. He said, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Overcome what? Overcome the gates. Because greater is he that is in you. Who is he? The king of glory. Than he that is in the world. So I announce to you again today. That whatever answers to the king of glory, whatever gets answers to the king of glory, because the greater one lives inside of you, the king of kings, and because you have received him as your king, when you get to the gate, you can tell the gate, lift up your heads, O ye gate, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Adeshola has to enter. Why would Adeshola have to enter? Because she's the daughter of the king of glory. As children of God, we carry that dominion and we carry that authority where gates answer to us. I want us to put up Psalm 24 verse 9 to 10. Psalm 24 verse 9 to 10. Hallelujah. Psalm 24 verse 9 to 10. And I want us to prophetically declare that using our own names in that passage. One, two, go. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Put your name there. Hold on. Put your name there. Because you are the daughter and the son of the king of glory. I want you to put your name there. So let's start again. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift you, ye everlasting doors. And a day shall shall come in. Hallelujah. And Adeshola shall enter through. Every gate of victory, every gate of increase, every gate of the next level, every gate that leads to peace in your marriage, I command them to open this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Why? Because the children of the King of Glory are the gates. The Lord will give you victory at every gate in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I see three things in that passage that made the gates open to Peter. That made him have victory at the iron gate that led into the city. The first one we already discussed is the Lord. He said the Lord himself sent his angel. So I want to appeal to us this morning. Because the Bible says it's for as many as have received the Lord and believe on his name. My assumption is that everybody here has received him. But for as many as have not received him, there are many gates in life, that, and many hurdles that you're going to have to overcome. And you need the power that the king of glory gives to his own to be able to open those gates. 
if you are here today and you have not received him, I want you to just wait behind after service and speak to one of the pastors so that that dominion, that power, we need to open gates for gates to answer to you will be handed to you as well in the mighty name of Jesus. The second thing I notice in that book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 10 to 12. In verse 11, verse 10, sorry. Sorry to confuse you, verse 5. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. The second thing that gave Peter victory at the gate was that the church was praying was as the church was praying. The Bible says in verse 5, it says, therefore Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God. Prayer was being made by the church without ceasing. No wonder the gates opened. The Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 3 verse 27, it says, who can enter into a strong man's house and plunder his goods <laughs> without first binding the strong man and then plunder his goods? Imagine somebody in the prison of stagnancy. And they've been there for two, three, five, seven years. The same thing, the same, they're going around in circles. They are status quo. And then finally, the gate of fruitfulness is presented to them. Hmm. You can imagine that the gatekeepers are going to fight him from entering that, those gates. But in the place of prayer, brethren, those, those, those gates, those gatekeepers can be commanded to be bound. Just like the church did for Peter. They exercised the dominion that they had in the place of prayer. And that is why it is essential, brethren, that every Christian and every child of God has an active prayer altar that is on fire for God. Things happen at those altars. Gates are opened at those altars. Gatekeepers are bound at those altars. And we can boldly tell them in the place of prayer, take dominion over them. Take authority over them in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know what gate you are believing God to open unto you. I want you to lift up your mouth this morning and just begin to pray. We are going to say in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I take authority over every gatekeeper that may be at the gate that leads into the city for me, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to pray and say, Father, I take authority in the place of prayer over every gatekeeper that may be manning the gate that leads to my city, my city of increase, my city of prosperity, my city of healing, my city of breakthrough, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you because we have dominion in the place of prayer to take authority over gatekeepers and to command every gate, oh God, that leads into the city for us to open in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to lift up our voice and begin to pray that gate that you are expectant of God to open unto you in this next half of the year. I want you to begin to talk to God and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority because of the dominion that I have in you over every gatekeeper to the prosperity of my children to the destiny oh Lord of my children I take authority over them in the mighty name of Jesus I begin to command those gates to open in the name of Jesus those opportunities oh God that new job that next level in the name of Jesus that spiritual next level with God I command it to open in the name of Jesus Christ Thank you, our ancient of days. Thank you, our mighty man in battle. Lord, we give you praise. We give you adoration. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We said that in that passage, three things we noticed that helped Peter overcome the gates that lead into the city. We said the first one was the Lord. We said the Lord himself sent an angel. The second one that the church was praying. The church was praying. The Bible says that men ought always to pray and not to faint. The Bible said, he said, Jesus said to his disciples, why are you sleeping? Arise and pray. I want to encourage us. We need to arise and pray. We need to arise and pray. There are many gates that we are still going to come across as we go through life. Even as we go through the next half of this year. Gates that our children are still going to encounter. But in the place and the dominion of prayer, we can have access. The Lord can grant us victory in the mighty name of Jesus. The third thing I noticed in that scripture, in Acts chapter 12 verse 10, Acts chapter 12 verse 10, the Bible says that when they were past the first and the second guard post, they came to an iron gate that led to the city, which opened of his own accord. I see grace in that, in that scripture. Because he passed through the first and the second guard post. He didn't even have to bind them. He didn't have to bind the gatekeepers. He was able to bypass the gatekeepers. That is grace. What is grace? It's unmerited favor. Something you don't work for. Something you don't labor for. He didn't have to bind over the gatekeepers. The Bible said he just bypassed them. The second thing, the gates opened of their own accord. Ha, hallelujah. That is grace, my brethren. When doors of opportunities open to you, you haven't even prayed for them. <laughs> Places that you have not put your resumes, they begin to call you. That is grace. Where doors open of their own accord. When next levels that you have never imagined just opens up onto you. So I believe that the grace of God was the third thing that works for Peter in that passage. Brethren, gates answer to graces. Great gates answer to the grace of God upon our lives. God can in his own mercy deposit grace upon the life of a man that works for him. And things will begin to happen. I'd be wondering, we, all, we, we graduated together at same degree. He doesn't even have an MBA. How? Because it's possible that the grace to have favor with men is upon that man. The Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8. It said, he raised the poor out of the dust. And lifted the beggar out of the dunghill. And set him with princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. Can you imagine a poor man? Where does he start from? A beggar. But if God releases grace upon that poor man or releases grace upon that beggar, gates would answer to the grace upon that man. I pray for somebody today. That the Lord will begin to release some graces into your life. That gates will begin to answer to. You won't even have to struggle. You won't even have to bind and cast and lose. But because of that grace, the, those doors will begin to open unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Isaac enjoyed this grace. The grace for increase. <laughs> the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis chapter 26 verse 12 to 14. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12 to 14. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12 to 14. Bible says, then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Bible says, and the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he was very great. Verse 14. For he had possessions of flocks 
and possession of herds and a great store of servants. And the Bible says, and the Philistines envied him. And my question is, why? It's their land, right? He was in a stranger's land. He was in the land of the Philistines. They could also go and start to till the land. And it would begin to bring increase unto them. But the grace of God was upon Isaac. It didn't matter whether the land was fertile or not. It didn't matter whether the land was, 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 could be tilled or not. The grace of increase upon his life. The Bible says he sowed and he began to multiply in a hundredfold. The people of the land were also sowing. But the same was not happening to them. Why? Because of the grace upon his life. The gates of increase opened up unto, Jacob, unto Isaac. I pray again for somebody. That the gates that have not opened to other people. Because of the deposit of grace upon your life. They will begin to open unto you of their own accord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Paul was going through a hard time. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. I will go ahead and just read. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. And he said to me, from verse 8, he said, For though I would desire to glory, I shall be a fool. I will say the truth. For now I forbear at least. Okay, let me read what is on the screen. So concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that he might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in, your, my, in, my, in my weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Bible says that Paul said three times, he cried out to God, please take this infirmity away from me. And it's within the power of God to just heal him. And it's also in the power of God to send an angel to deliver him. But Bible says he told him that my grace is sufficient for you. What does that mean? He said, Paul, I have deposited grace in your life. That would enable you to rise above whatever circumstance that you are going through. Go ahead and bask in that grace. That my deposit of grace upon your life is sufficient to take you through that, that situation. I don't need to send an angel to deliver you. I'm praying again for somebody. That whatever circumstance that you may be going through. That the Lord would deposit grace sufficient enough to go through that situation. In the mighty name of Jesus. How do we access this grace? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. The Bible says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That ye having all sufficient in all things may abound for every good work. And God is able to make all grace, all dimensions of grace, ramifications of grace available to you. The same way he made the grace available to Isaac and made the, that grace available to Paul. The Bible says he's able to make all dimensions of grace that you need to open the gates available to you and I. He said that having all sufficiency, you may abound for every good work. Sufficiency for what? What is sufficiency? Ability to have enough. Ab ability to be okay. I don't know where you need the sufficiency of God to open gates unto you. The Bible says he has all grace in his, in his warehouse. All diverse kind of grace in his storage house that he can make available to you and I. The Bible says, let us approach the throne of grace boldly that we might receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us approach the throne of grace 
boldly. That we might receive mercy and, and grace to help in time of need. I want to ask us to approach the throne of grace boldly this morning. I don't know what kind of grace you are looking for to open doors for you. The Bible says that he is able to make all of it available to you and I. He said we should just approach the throne of grace where the king of glory is resident. And you'll be able to find grace that would help you. Help you at, the, at that gate to, that leads to a new job. Help you at that grace that leads to increase. Help you at that grace that opens gates into a new territory. For some people, it's just the next level of your walk with God that God needs to give you grace for. You have circled this mountain long enough. And God is saying, I want to take you higher with me. But it, 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 it's hard. He says he's able to make that grace available to you. You just need to approach the throne of grace boldly. Thank you, Jesus. And as I begin to round up, I just want to caution that for every city gate that the Lord is going to open unto you, and every grace that God is going to deposit on your life. Make sure it's for his glory. The Bible says he's able to make all grace abound to you. Having all sufficiency. For what? For every good work. As God begins to open divine doors and, and gates onto some people in this next half of the year. And as it begins to deposit some strange graces to open those gates. Let us make sure it's for the glory of God. Let us make sure we are using them for kingdom advancement. Let us make sure that we are using them for soul winning. The reason God was able to make Peter go through that gate was because there were so many souls in the city that needed to be won for him. So he couldn't afford to be kept in prison. So when God begins to open those gates into the city... Don't get into the city and forget God. When things begin to happen for you, don't, don't get there and just forget the one who made it possible for you. Samson was a man that was graced, but he forgot God. The Bible tells us in the book of Judges, chapter 16, verse 3, the Bible says he rose up at midnight and he went to a city gate and he pulled the city gate, still locked, and he went to the top of a mountain and just dropped the gate there. That was how graced he was. But by the time we get to verse 20, the Bible says he shook himself. He said, and I will go out as before. Judges chapter 16 verse 20. He said, but he did not know that the Lord had left him. Brethren, the God that is able to make all grace available is also able to take that grace back from us. So as the Lord begins to open gates unto you and deposit great graces upon your life, make sure to give him back the glory. Bible says in Psalm 118 verse 19, he said, open to me the grace of, of righteousness. I would go through and I will praise the Lord. Open to me the gate of righteousness. And I would go through them and I will praise the Lord. Please come back and praise God. Make sure you are giving him glory as he begins to make it happen unto you. Finally, as we journey through life and God begins to grant us victory over gates let us remember that at the end of the day the most important thing is that we're able to make it to the gate of heaven there's also the gate that leads to heaven and we're going to need grace to enter through so what would it what, what, what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul you have conquered every gate every gate of increase you have conquered Every gate of prosperity you have conquered. 
But then the gates of heaven <laughs> were not able to enter. I pray that the Lord will give you the grace to live a life of holiness. A life that pleases God. A life to stay as a child of God. So that when you get to heaven's gates, you'll be able to enter through. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to just rise up respect, respectfully. Please let's rise up even this morning. Thank you, Jesus. And I want us to just begin to pray. The first prayer point where somebody said, Lord, I know that you have plans for me. I know your plan for me is to be victorious. I know your plan for me is to be an overcomer. So I want to begin to talk to God concerning every gate that is yet to open unto you. And begin to say, Lord, Father, grant me the grace, O God, that this gate will begin to open unto me in the name of Jesus. Father, that every dimension of grace, O God, Father, Lord, that gates answer to, Lord, release unto me in the name of Jesus. Father, every dimension of grace, the Bible says God is able to make all of those grace available unto you. Say, so just approach the throne of grace boldly that you might receive that grace. I don't know what grace you need. Just begin to talk to God this morning. Father, the grace to enter in. Father, Lord, the gates, oh God, the grace, oh God, for those gates to begin to answer unto me. That it granted unto me. It rather released it unto me. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father, the grace to conquer gates, Father, release unto me. The grace, oh God, that leads to the next level, that it release unto me, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray for our children in the name of Jesus, oh God. That, Lord, the grace, oh God, Father, for the gates, oh God, even to open unto them as they journey through life. Father, grant it unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father and our God. Thank you, our King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We said we recognize three things there that made Peter overcome at the gate of, or, 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 or overcame at that iron gate. We said the first one was the Lord. The first one was the Lord. I want you to cry out to God this morning and say, Father, the grace to continue to be in you. Father, I grant it unto me in the name of Jesus, oh God. The grace to continue to be in you, to be your child. Father, Lord, the grace to continue to have that dominion that you give to your sons and your daughters. Father, I grant it unto me in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father, the grace to keep being a son and your daughter, oh God. Father, Lord, grant it unto me, oh God. That grace, oh God, that you give to men and women, oh God, who are your own sons and daughters. Father, grant me that grace, oh God, to continue to be in you in the name of Jesus. I will not backslide, oh God. Father, Lord, I will not go back. I will not put my hand on the plow and look back in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are the Lord that can help me at the gates. Father, Lord, the grace to keep in you, that you grant it unto me, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. We said the second thing was prayer. I want you to talk to God this morning. I don't know what the state of your prayer altar is. But I want you to cry out to God and say, Father, Lord, the grace for my prayer altar to be on fire for you. Daddy, grant it unto me in the name of Jesus. The grace for my prayer altar to be on fire for you at all times. Father, grant it unto me in the name of Jesus. For as many, oh God, Father Lord, as whose prayer altar, Father, does not exist, I pray in the name of Jesus for you this morning that those prayer altars will be fired up in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, the grace, oh God, Father Lord, to crave your presence in the place of prayer. Father, that prayer altar, oh God, that will be fired up with the power of the Holy Ghost 
in the name of Jesus, oh God, every dead prayer altar, we command you to arise in the name of Jesus. Every dead prayer altar, I command you to be revived in the name of Jesus. Malinda Bakranda Yende Rebo, Bakranda Yende Rebo, Father Lord, the grace of God to be fired up on that prayer altar that He grants it unto me in the name of Jesus. As a church, we will not sleep, as a church, we will not slumber in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The last thing we noticed there was the grace of God, which we have already prayed about. But I want you to pray about one more grace and say, Father, grant me the grace to enter into heaven's gates in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, grant me the grace of God, baby, to enter into heaven's gates in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I will not miss heaven. Lord, I will not miss heaven. In the name of Jesus, the grace to live a life of holiness, the left grace that life that pleases you, that He granted unto me. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, the grace to make it to heaven. Lord, I would not miss heaven for anything. In the mighty name of Jesus, the grace to enter in on that last day. In the mighty name of Jesus, our children will be given the grace of God to continue to live holy before you, Father. In the name of Jesus, thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. The title of today is Overcoming at the Gates. Lastly, we are going to pray and say, Father Lord, grant me the gates to overcome at every gate. In the mighty name of Jesus. As I journey through the, this next six months, oh God, the grace to overcome at every quarter. Father, grant it unto me in the name of Jesus. The grace to be victorious, oh God. Father, grant it unto me in the name of Jesus. The grace to be able to testify, oh God, of the things that you are going to do for me. Father, grant it unto me in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, every dimension of victory, Father, grant it unto me in the name of Jesus. At every hurdle, oh God, that I'm going to get through. Father, for the many rest of this year. Father, Lord, the grace to be victorious. The grace to be an overcomer. Father, the grace, oh God, to make it through. That He granted unto me in the name of Jesus. I'll be victorious at the gates. I'll be victorious at every gate in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our Father and our Lord, we just want to thank you, oh God, even for your word to us this morning, oh God. Father, I know that your desire for us is to be overcomers, oh God. In this next six months, oh God, of 2021, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for your grace, oh God. Your grace that is sufficient for every season, oh God. Upon the lives of your children, the grace to overcome, oh God. The grace, oh God, that answer, get answer to, oh God. Grant unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. Upon the house of prayer, Father Lord, we pray. Father Lord, even for grace, oh God, to overcome as a church. In the name of Jesus. The grace will be victorious in all seasons and at all time. Father, grant it unto us, O God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for our children today, O God. Ah, they still have life ahead of them. We pray for grace in advance for them. That, Lord, you will release grace into the life of our children. To be overcome as, O God, in life and in destiny. And at every grace that presents unto them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.